Now that we've calculated our total current and found our impedance by voltage divided by amps, gave us our ohms. Now we're gonna work on the power values, basically using Ohm's law to derive the power values for each component. And then we'll come through and find out what is my power factor. And we'll go and check out the angle, angle theta. How much is that total current leading the voltage at the source? How many degrees? We know it's in capacitive territory and therefore ICE, I-C-E, current will lead the voltage. We're gonna find out by how many degrees in this circuit, okay? Power values, Ohm's law on each component. Ohm's law here, Ohm's law, Ohm's law. I can even do Ohm's law here. So let's fill in these values, and then I'm gonna use the Pythagorean theorem to double check our math. Because my net reactive uh, power squared plus my true power squared, I'll have to write that in here, should equal apparent power squared. So we'll take the square root of that and get this number. Let's see. Okay, I got all the values with Ohm's law. Missing this guy. But let's look over at our vectors. What is this? Well, it's the big vector. I just left the current values here because our, our current vectors are all relative to the voltage, voltage being the same on each branch. But we could also use the power, the capacitive power, total power, meaning apparent, resistive power, true power, inductive power. Technically, according to our sheet, those are flipped for power, but we're not that concerned about it. The numbers are gonna work out the same. So we take the bigger power vector minus the little power vector. 13, 20 VARs minus 600 VARs. And I'll just put VARs total, volt amps reactive total. That's the combination of those, or the, the difference of them really, vectors going in opposing directions. Okay. And here's the formula if I want to double check those. We're used to it, it's really Pythagoras. Let's take a look. Really two formulas, but the same thing. This formula is before I did the math to find the 27, uh, the 720 uh, VARs total, total reactive power. This did it for me. It was the big one, capacitive VARs, minus the little one, inductive VARs. Squared, squared, square root, VA. Here, if I've already done that math, 960 squared, 720 squared equals power squared, 1200. And if you do that math, either of these formulas come up with 1200 volt amps. Now that we got our power numbers, power factor is not a problem. Once again, just like in the series circuit, power factor is watts divided by volt amps. How much real work is getting done? The power, the watts, they're on the resistor. How much real work is getting done for all I have to put into the circuit? Because some of it is going over to take care of these components. Just doing the storing, releasing, storing, releasing and kind of trading back and forward with each other as we talked about with the, uh, with the current, okay? That's why the, the current, that five amps, it was trading back and forward and the rest is storing and releasing to the circuit, okay? So 960 divided by 1200, true power over apparent. Remember right here, it's our basic formula, watts over VA. How efficient is the circuit for giving me real work for what I'm putting into it, okay? We could also, because the triangles are proportional, use my resistive amps over my total amps. And you do either one, eight divided by 10 or 960 divided by 1200, and you're gonna get 80%. Now this is a re there's a relationship between the power factor and this angle we recall. Okay. The lower the angle, 
the better the power factor because there's less reactants. Okay? If I added more inductive current or took away some of my capacitive current, I would lower the difference. So how do we get that angle? Well, we know that cosine of an angle is the adjacent over the hypotenuse. Doesn't do us much good at this point because we've got the ratio already. We know what this side relative to this side is in amps or in power. So we gotta flip that. We gotta do the arc cosine, okay? Or in a calculator, hit second function cosine and this is what it'll look like. That's what you'll get. And what do you put in there? You put the ratio in there. Adjacent over hypotenuse, which is basically this side over this side. We'll do it with the smaller numbers. You can do eight divided by 10, or you could have just put 0.8, which is really what 80% is. Could just put your power factor in there, but in decimal format, 0.8. And hit equals, what do you get? 36. 0.87 degrees. And that's what we have. Power values, power factor, finding our angle theta. So the at the source, this current, this 10 amps, is leaving the applied voltage by 37 degrees. It's a capacitive circuit. It's pointing up into capacitive territory.